Hello everyone and welcome back to Barney's Backyard. I'm Barney and today I've got a very special cooking video for you. We are going to be preparing the single most iconic dish of my childhood, a true Hungarian classic, meat soup. Now, I know, I know, you're probably wondering what meat soup is now. Well, meat soup is a clear soup, like a bouillon or a consomme, prepared from a variety of different proteins, vegetables and herbs, slowly simmered to perfection. Alright, before we jump into this, there are a few things that I want to clarify. First of all, this soup, this recipe has been prepared for thousands and thousands of years. There are many alternative, similar recipes around the world. Even in French classical cooking, you have the consomme. So by, by this, all I mean to say is that each, each country, each area, each household have their own surefire tips on how best prepare this soup. So instead of getting lost in this web today, what I'm going to do is I will pull together the near 300 years of experience that our family's grandparents have in preparing this soup. So buckle up and let's go. First of all, let's talk about the ingredients. This, this recipe always has the same composition. It has some source of protein, in our case it's a chicken. Most commonly it is preferred from a chicken, from a hen, from an older chicken, but you can also use beef, you can use quail, you can use guinea fowl, you can use goose. There's a lot of different meats that will, that will fit your description for this. It also has vegetables, different assortment of vegetables, some herbs and some aromatics. As far as the vegetables are concerned, you normally have a selection of different root vegetables, like carrots, like celeriac root, some like kohlrabi and also very traditionally some white carrots. Now, white carrots is not a normal term, it's basically uh, parsley root. As for the herbs, I have here flat leaf parsley and equal amount of celeriac greens. Celeriac is also an important flavor to this soup, so you would normally have it either to the celeriac root or to the celeriac green. In our case, we chose to use the kohlrabi because it's a little bit sweeter, it's a little bit more mild to eat as a vegetable in the soup and we bring in the celeriac flavor to the greens. Moving on to the aromatics, I have here a tomato, an onion and a few cloves of garlic. Now garlic is not that essential, you could get away without using any, but we like it a lot so we added some. Last but not least, the soup also needs some whole peppercorns and a special touch of mine some juniper berries. Pro tip, you can seriously complement the flavor of your soup by adding some dried mushrooms. How much of everything we should use? There is no real written rule. It's about the balance of flavors. You have to balance the flavors of the veggies and the flavor of the meat. So what does it mean in practical terms? Well, let's say we have here one and a half kilo of chicken, right? So to that, after peeling and cutting, we are going to add 800 grams to 1 kilo of vegetables. Now let's talk about how to cook this soup. First we start with our meat. It is absolutely essential to use a cut with the bones. If you use poultry, use an entire bird or if you prefer beef, use oxtail for the best results. In this video I'm going to show you how I normally break down a chicken for this soup. The reasons for using a cut with bones cartilage and skin are numerous. 1. The flavor of the soup predominantly comes from these parts. 2. The slow cooking of these parts release an easily consumable source of collagen which boosts skin, hair and joint strength. 3. Soups of this nature are thought to have probiotic qualities, boosting digestion and supporting recovery and regeneration. I remember going to the town market as a kid with my grandparents, buying a live hen. Man, those soups were the best. Now you could easily just chop up the crown as well, the same way as we did with the back of the chicken. But if you live with kids or people who don't like bones in their soup, you might be forced to fillet it out. That does not, however, mean that you should throw away the bones from it. With the meat processed, it's now time to start cooking it. Absolutely critical to start cooking it in cold water. This is something I've learned. 
you use cold water, you are penetrating all the tissue, all the parts of the meat and you are drawing out the flavor. You use hot water, you are seeding the flavor inside. Next up is the aromatics. Add the peppers and the junipers. Make crosscuts on the tomato and the onion and add them in the soup together with the garlic. If you chose to add some mushrooms, this is the time. With that, our soup can start cooking on minimum heat and it's time to turn our attention to our vegetables. We peel the carrots. We peel the parsley roots. And we clean the kohlrabi. Slice them into one to two finger size large chunks. While we prepare our vegetables, our soup is slowly starting to bubble and some foam is starting to appear. This foam comes from the proteins that's slowly starting to cook inside the chicken and it's crucial to remove it. You have to do it over time, you have to be patient and you have to take off as much as you can. If you've done everything right, you should end up with something like this. The foam stops coming, you remove the last of it and then we move on to the next stage. Remember those herbs? Now it's time to neatly arrange them and tie them up. This is also called the bouquet garni or a fresh bunch of garden herbs. The string I am using in this video to tie up the herbs is called the butcher string. You can buy it at your local butcher or your supermarket and it's a string fit for culinary use. We add it into our soup while continuously making sure that it never comes to a rolling boil, only slowly simmers. When the meat is almost cooked, it's time to add our veggies. And a bit more. And a bit more. All that's left to do now is to watch and let the magic happen. Do not let your soup boil, only slowly simmer. Is it my turn? Before serving the soup, Carefully remove all the aromatics, the herbs, the tomato, the onion, and the garlic. With that done, it's time to remove the vegetables. Hey, where's my music? Much better. Mm -hmm. Be as gentle as you can, not to crush the vegetables as you are taking them out. Look at it simmering. Isn't it beautiful? Oh yeah. And now, it's time to take out the meat. We usually serve this soup by separately presenting the meat, the vegetable and the broth on the table, so everyone can take for themselves. Now. If you've done a good job, your broth should be as clear as a glass of wine. 
For the full authentic experience, serve it with a side of vermicelli noodles, fresh parsley and chili. Fun fact, the cooked meat is often served separately with a side of horseradish. At the end of our video now, I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the support and the interest in previous week's episodes as well. Make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you like what you've seen. It really helps the channel. And with all that said, catch you next time.